in section 12.8, we are looking at lengths of curves. So to begin, I want you to recall that back in Calc 2, we defined the length of a curve y equals f of x on a closed interval from a to b using the definite integral. So we have the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of our curve squared dx. So in this section, we use a similar method to find the length of a curve parameterized by a vector-valued function, vector r of t, on again a closed interval from a to b. Now since a natural extension exists from r2 to r3, let's begin by deriving the formula in r2, and then we'll look at how this extends into space. So here we go, arc length with parametric equations. So to begin, let's let c be a smooth curve parameterized by the vector-valued function vector r of t with components f of t, g of t, again on a closed interval from a to b. So in order to derive the arc length formula for our parametrized curve, we need to define what are the parametric representations of the x and y coordinates and then differentiate them with respect to our arbitrary parameter t. So looking at our vector valued function, we can see that the parametric equation for x will be f of t and the parametric equation for y will be g of t. So we have x is f of t and y is defined as g of t. So we want to take these two parametric equations and differentiate with respect to t. So here we go. Differentiating both sides here with respect to t, we have the derivative of x with respect to t is equal to f prime of t. And now we can rewrite this in an equivalent format if we multiply both sides of this equation by dt. This is equivalent to saying the differential dx is equal to f prime of t dt. Now similarly for y, differentiating both sides here with respect to y, we have the derivative of y with respect to t is defined as g prime of t. And again, multiplying both sides of this equation by dt, we are left with dy is equal to g prime of t dt. So we're now going to go ahead and take these two parametric differentials and plug them into the arc length formula we already know and love. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we now want to go ahead and substitute the differentials, those parametric differentials for dx and dy into the arc length formula. So again, we found dx is defined as f prime of t dt, and we found dy to be defined as g prime of t dt. Now, looking at the arc length formula, notice that we have the differentials. We have dy within that radicand. We also see dx here within that radicand and on the outside of that square root. So we're going to take these differentials and plug them in and simplify to attain the arc length formula for a parametric representation of a smooth curve. So here we go. This becomes the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus, now we're going to replace dy with g prime of t dt. We have g prime of t dt in the numerator, and we're going to replace this dx with f prime of t dt. So there's our new denominator, and don't forget this is all squared. And under that square root, we need a little bit more room. And we also have that differential dx on the outside of our square root. So we're going to replace that with f prime of t dt. And now the rest of this is just algebra. So notice within the radicand, those two dt's cancel each other out to 1. And we can rewrite this definite integral from a to b as the square root of 1 plus. Now I'm going to take this square and distribute it to both derivatives. 
using those properties of exponents. So this is 1 plus the derivative of g with respect to t squared divided by the derivative of f with respect to t squared. And we'll use our parentheses here for safety. And on the outside of this square root, we still have f prime of t dt. So we can now simplify within that radicand by rewriting 1 using a common denominator. So we can rewrite this as the definite integral from a to b of the square root of, so I'm rewriting 1 now as f prime of t squared, all divided by f prime of t squared, plus we have g prime of t squared, all divided by f prime of t squared. And you really can skip this step. This is just a little extra work to help you along the way. And on the outside of this radical, or this square root, is still f prime of t dt. So now that we have this common denominator, we can combine those terms and continue our simplification. So this becomes... We have the definite integral from a to b of the square root of f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared in the numerator. And this is all divided by that common denominator, f prime of t squared. And this whole square root is still multiplied by f prime of t dt. So now using the properties of radicals, we can distribute this square root to both the numerator and denominator of our integrand. So this is the definite integral from a to b of the square root of f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared. And we've distributed the square root as well to the denominator. So that's going to be the square root of f prime of t squared multiplied by f prime of t dt. So notice in the denominator, we have the square root of a perfect square. So those will cancel each other right out, leaving us with the definite integral from a to b of the square root of f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared, which may look familiar. And this is all divided by f prime of t, multiplied by f prime of t dt. So we can see now the f prime, or the derivative of f with respect to t, cancels in the numerator and denominator, leaving us with the definite integral from a to b of the square root of the derivative of the f component squared plus the derivative of the g component squared dt. And looking at this, we realize, hey, this integrand is the magnitude of your tangent vector. So we can rewrite this as the definite integral from a to b of the magnitude or the length of the tangent vector for our parameterized curve. So this is the arc length formula that we'll use for finding the length of a curve parameterized by a vector valued function. Now keep in mind that this definition of course is specific to the planar R2. So how will we extend this into space? We just need to add the z component. So in space, or in R3, our curve C is parameterized by the vector-valued function R of t, defined by the components f of t, g of t, h of t. And we're still on that closed interval where t is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So here, the definite integral from a to b is of the square root of f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared. So there's r2. And then to extend this into three dimensions, we add h prime of t squared. 
and this is still the magnitude of our tangent vector. So this is the definite integral from a to b of the magnitude of that tangent vector. And so there you have it. This is the arc length formula or the definite integral that we'll use to find the length of our curve parameterized by the vector valued function in space. So we are ready now to go ahead and explore this with some examples.